In this video we're collecting skulls for the skull throne and blood for the blood god as I show you how to paint a corn demon prince for either Warhammer 40,000 or Age of Sigma. Let's get painting. I've primed the model black using Chaos Black Spray and I've then used Mephiston Red Spray over the top to make it red. Now one of the challenges we're going to have is separating out the red flesh from the red armour so let's start with that and I'll show you how I did it. It would be extremely rude not to use corn red on this model so we're going to use this on all of the armour panels which means we'll have a darker red armour and a brighter red fleshy tone. So all we're doing is covering all of the armour using this darker red nice easy and straightforward. We're going to shade all of this model at the same time so we'll get the metallic colours down next starting with all of that brass trim and the colour we're going to use this is Balthazar Gold. Now be as tidy as you can but don't worry if you do make mistakes you can always tidy up with either corn or Mephiston Red before we do the shading. For all the silver parts such as the axe head and all the exposed cabling I'm using dark aluminium from Vallejo Metal Colour. Now if you have lead belcher you can use that instead. I just prefer this because it flows a little better. So take your time with this, make sure you cover all the silver areas including all the chain links on the wings and then when we come back we'll shade it all. Before you start shading the miniature make sure you've corrected any mistakes or overspills and then we'll take some Nelm oil and paint this over absolutely everything apart from the wing membranes which are going to be black. Now take your time with this because we don't want it to pool too much in the recesses so you've got some really dark bits of shadow. We just want to tint everything and give it a little bit of shade and as we start the highlighting process you'll see how we can add some soft highlights back in that will minimize the effect of any deep mistakes you make. When that first coat of Nell Oil is completely dry, I'm going to put a second coat onto all of the armour sections because I just want to darken that red a little bit more. So add that second coat of Nell Oil just on the armour panels. Make sure all of that Nell Oil is completely dry and we'll get on to the highlighting stage. We'll do the flesh first and the first thing we're going to do is take some Mephiston Red and a nice small soft dry brush and we're going to dry brush all of the fleshy areas and this will start to bring a nice soft highlight that will take away some of the harshness of that Nell Oil wash. Just take your time around bits that are going to be different colours. If you do happen to catch an edge of say the armour trim, don't worry too much because we will be highlighting that as well so it should cover up uh, any mistakes you make. Next up we'll take a little bit of corn red and we'll start to add some of that brightness back into the armour panel. So just work your way around and we're looking for those bits of armour that face upwards that are going to catch light and be a little bit brighter. The armour that we've got in the shadows and in the sort of facing down we can leave that the darker shade that we've produced. The reason we use corn red last is because the highlight colour for the flesh and for the armour is going to be the same. So it's Evil Sun Scarlet and what we're looking to do on the armour is just paint across the edges and also on the inside where we've got that trim we want to just paint inside a little bit away from the trim to give that impression of a highlight. When it comes to the flesh we're going to do two things. Firstly for the face where we want the most definition because this is the focal point of the model we want to put some nice sharp highlights in. When it comes to things like the rest of the flesh and in particular the wing spines we're going to use a dry brush and it's going to be the same dry brush we used before just make sure it's completely dry and I'm just going to brush this across all of those spines and because they're quite textured and have lots of raised edges the evil sun scar is going to pick up really nicely the last highlight on all the flesh is going to be with wild rider red and we're going to be going for a sharp highlight all over this time so again focus on the face as that's the focal point of the miniature get some nice crisp highlights in there taking your time not to overspill into any of those recessed areas and then when it comes to the rest of the flesh such as the hands and the spines on the wings we're looking to catch those raised edges and the sharpest bits of detail nice and easy and straightforward but really simple and effective with the armor and flesh complete let's go in and highlight the trim so the color we're going to use for this is sycorax bronze and we're at that point now where we just need to start being a little more careful with our application to make sure that we don't go over anything we've already finished so with this we're looking to catch all of the edges of that trim and this will really significantly brighten up the armour and you'll start to get a really nice shine across some of that brass. To finish off the trim and any other brassy areas such as the detail on the beard we're going to use Canoptec Alloy and we just want to focus this on the sharpest edges so we can drag the side of our brush to get a nice crisp finish and any parts that are going to be facing upwards uh, towards the light source on this miniature. So again work your way around taking your time start off small you can always add more later on. Now this is quite a bright brass effect if you wanted something a little more muted or battered you could try washing it with something like Agrax Earthshade and add some Nylac Oxide as well to add some verdigris effects. 
Now, of course, the model is still looking very, very red at the moment, so it's quite hard to differentiate the different aspects. So let's take some black paint and start to block in those darker colors. So we're looking at things like the wing membranes, the claws, the hair. I'm gonna do that one right shoulder pad that's got the big horn on it in black as well and just work your way around and figure out from either the box art or have a look at the end of this video to see the other parts I've painted black. But there's quite a bit of black and this is going to really bring everything together quite nicely before we start highlighting. The first black highlight we'll do is on all those wing membranes and the colour we're going to use is Skaven Blight Dinge. So firstly we're going to dry brush this over everything and this will give you a nice soft highlight. So get that done, be careful not to get it on any of the finished parts and then I'll show you how when we come back we'll add a harder highlight in there which will just accentuate some of the folds on that membrane. We'll stay with Skaven Blight Dinge to go in and add slightly harder highlights to those wing membranes. Now we're only really focusing on the back of the wings because the parts of the wings that face downwards are going to be in shadow anyway. And what I'm looking to do is to catch maybe two thirds of the folds as you can see me doing here. And this is really quick and sharp. The other thing we're going to use Skaven Blight Dinge for is highlighting all of the hair on the beard and the top of the corn demon's head. We're also going to use it for the loincloth and also for that living right shoulder pad. So just take your time and just try to catch as many raised edges as you can to get a nice sharp highlight. And if you want to blend it in a little bit by adding a little bit of black on some of the areas, you can do that as well. We'll move on to Storm Vermin Fur next, and that's going to be used to add the next level of highlight. And we're going to do exactly the same thing with this across all the same areas we used that Skaven Blight Dinge. But we are looking to just keep it within the Skaven Blight Dinge highlight, so it adds a little bit more contrast. When it comes to those wing membranes, we're not looking to cover too much at all. Probably just about a third of the most raised part of those folds. If you need to add a sharper highlight on these areas, then just take a little bit of Carrick Stone. Now, I've used this on that sharp horn on the shoulder pad, as well as some of the teeth, and a little bit on some of the hair and the beard, just to give it a little bit of separation. For those harder, sharper surfaces, we're going to use a brighter highlight that stands out a bit more to give the impression of a shine. And the colour we're going to use is Mechanica Standard Grey. We're going to use this on all the claws, uh, the talons on the wings and also the hoofs and all we're looking to do is just catch those sharpest edges so it gives a really nice focal point that draws your eye. Now there are plenty of skull and bone elements on the demon prints so we'll base them with Xandri dust. Now thin it down a little bit, it should cover okay but you may need a second coat just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So we're going to look at all the skulls around the side of those trophies and also the horns on the head and coming out of his cheeks as well. The first highlight across all those bone areas is going to be with Ushabti bone, but we just want a soft highlight. We don't want anything too sharp at this point. We'll do that in the next step. So it's back to the dry brush and just take your time because we are going quite near areas you've already finished. Use a smallish dry brush or makeup brush and just gently add some Ushabti bone in to give a little bit of different in colour. But again, remember, it's a soft highlight. That final sharp highlight is done using Screaming Skull, which is a nice bright bone colour. When it comes to things like the skulls, we're looking to catch those raised areas around the sockets, the brow, with the teeth, etc. And then for the horns, we're looking for those striations. We're looking to just paint some really crisp, thin lines to give the impression of highlights. At this point, all of the bone elements are looking very similar, so we want to differentiate them and add a little more contrast. So we'll take some Agrax Earthshade and we'll pick a few skulls and paint this onto them. Not too heavily, we just want to tint them slightly. And we'll also use it on the horns on the head as well, just painting it towards the bottom where the horns come out of the head. This will give you a nice little darker transition. For those skulls that are still the basic colour, we'll just take some Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint and paint this over them. And this will just give you a different, warmer brown tone to that colder Agrax. We'll do that demon infested left arm next and we're going to base it all using Screamer Pink. Now if you're not sure how far this extends, check the box art because the black armoured demon prince does show you how far this extends so you can make sure you get it right. Once that's dry, we'll shade it using some null oil. Now, we just want a nice thin coverage here. We don't want it too heavy. We just want it to flow into some of those recesses. So if you want, thin it with a little bit of Lamian Medium. Or if you've got the new formula, null oil, that should be fine as well. We'll then tidy up using Screamer Pink again. So if we've gone too dark in some areas or we've covered some of the highlights, we'll just put that Screamer Pink on to bring it back to life before we start highlighting. Now, the first colour we're going to highlight with is Pink Horror. This is a little bit brighter than Screamer Pink, so we're just looking to catch those most raised areas. Take your time with this, and if you do think it's too bright, then you can always paint over it. But most of the time, once it dries, it does give you a nice transition. 
Finally, we'll take some Emperor's Children, which is a bright pink, and we'll use this just on the sharpest areas, such as around where the teeth are and where you've got those horns emerging from it. And this will really set it off. I should say I painted the tongue using the same colours on that left arm, so we'll paint the teeth next. And firstly, we're going to base them using Rakarth Flesh. So this is nice and straightforward. Just take your time around where you've already finished. To shade the teeth, just take some Agrax Earth Shade. Now, this is a really easy step. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, though, as you don't want to flood the area. When that's completely dry, just take some Pallid Witch Flesh and use this to highlight the teeth, focusing on the raised parts and the pointy bits that you can see, because this will really help set them off in the face. You'll be able to see them from a little bit of a distance as well. Next up, we'll do all of the eyes across the model, of which there are quite a few. So, firstly, take some white paint. Now, I use bold titanium white from Procryl. You can use whatever white you've got. And just use this to paint in all of those eyeballs. Now, there's quite a few, such as on the shoulder pad, obviously the face, around the uh, weapon arm as well. So, just double check that you've got all of them. Then we'll take some Bad Moon Yellow Contrast Paint and make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and just simply paint this over the white and you get some instant, nice, bright, glowing yellow eyes. Now we'll paint that Chaos Icon on the right hand, which I completely didn't think about when gluing the wings on, so the focus here is a nightmare. Basically, I did exactly the same thing by painting some bold titanium white into that recesses in the shape of a Chaos Star. I then painted Imperial Fist Contrast Paint, which is slightly warmer than the Bad Moon Yellow, so better for fire, into those recesses over that white and let it dry. And again, with the absolutely terrible focus, I painted Magma Droth Flame over the Imperial Fist Yellow. But before it dried, I cleaned my brush off, put a little bit of water on it so it was damp, and then cleaned most of the Magma Droth Flame away. So I was left with a nice orange-yellow glow in those recesses. Finally, it's time to highlight the silver, and this is the last part that we're going to be doing on the model. So the colour I use is Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Now, for most of the silver, it's just a simple edge highlight catching the sharp edges of the uppermost facing part of that silver element. So just work your way around and get that done. When it comes to the axe, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to give it a bit of a, a worn, battered metal look. So with the highlight, I of course did those edge highlights. I then made sure I had a very good tip on the brush, and I just drew lots of streaky lines uh, down towards the edge of the blade. And I made sure these lines were slightly different lengths, so it just gave the impression that it was a little bit battered and it had been polished and resharpened time and time again and that's the model done and there we have it this corn demon prince is ready to reap a terrible tally on the battlefield i really hope you've enjoyed the video don't forget you can use it on all of your other corn models as well if you want otherwise check out my other content and i'll see you next time